What's up everyone? Today I am going to do a tour of all of the things that I have on the MacBook I am speaking into right now. So I work as an iOS developer and I'm going to show you all of the programming tools I use as well as all of the regular apps I have on this machine and also all of the configurations and stuff like that I have set up. So if there's anything interesting, I'll try to cover it. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy this video. So starting right off with the most important app on my MacBook, the terminal. So the terminal I use is called Ghosty and I've actually only been using it since the start of this year, but I have to say I'm super happy with it so far. So before Ghosty, I was actually using Kiri, which is also a great terminal. But Ghosty, I've just become very used to switching around the tabs here. It's super fast, it's super clean, feels very native to the Mac, and I'm very happy with it. So one thing that's really great with Ghosty is that it requires very minimal config to get up and running. So if we actually go ahead and open my config, you can see that this is all of the modifications I have done to the other stock experience. So I have selected a theme, and also I gotta give a quick shout out to the Ghosty theme selector. I think it's list themes. You can scroll through and see the themes in an interactive way. And I just did this, found a really sick one, 3024 night, selected that, plopped it into my config and boom, we're good. Also the font I'm using is SF Mono by Apple, which is super clean. I mean, just look at it, it's perfect. I found an open source version that's patched with nerd fonts. So it includes a lot of additional icons and uh, symbols and such. And the last thing I've done is I've disabled all types of ligaturization. So a ligaturization is when you combine characters to create symbols and I hate it. So for instance, a typical one is F and I would merge together or an arrow symbol or double arrow or something like that. But I hit it, so I've disabled it and boom, that's all of the config for Ghosty that I need. Okay, next up, I want to cover the shell that I'm running on this machine. So as you can see here, I'm running Fish. So Fish is a super sick shell that uh, is blazing fast, which is the reason I run it. Now, sometimes I actually have to go into set CH because shell is actually not POSIX compliant. So sometimes when you're running bash scripts, they simply don't work. And when that happens, I open set CH, but you can see it's totally lacking speed-wise compared to fish on the left. So for me, I don't really do a lot of shell scripting. So using something that's not POSIX compliant isn't really too bad. And also from what I've seen, actually scripting in fish seems like a pretty enjoyable experience. But yeah, for me, I'm very happy with just using it anyways. Okay, next up, we have my code editor, which is no other than Xcode. And let me tell you, Xcode is so sick when it works, but so annoying when it doesn't work. And also it feels very bloated and sometimes really slow. But other than that, I feel like it's a pretty nice uh, code editor. And uh, for me, I work as an iOS developer working on the app Oshunaken. I can show you actually in the simulator. So we got it open here. So in addition to just running the simulators using Xcode, I also use something called Rocket Sim, which gives me a lot of uh, different tweaks I can do on the side, like location switching really easily if I want to do that, as well as toggles for flight mode and some other really nice quality of life things. Also, I can open deep links through Rocket Sim and yeah, use it every single day. So yeah, shout out to the Rocket Sim creator. I think it's actually an indie dev guy and he has a very nice newsletter as well. So you should check that out. Okay, so that was Xcode. Yeah, lastly, I want to cover the theme I use in Xcode. Code. This is called uh, Midnight. So yeah, that's it. I think it's a really nice theme. Check it out. Boom. Okay, next up, I want to cover my web development setup, which I do using Xcode. No, VS Code. This is called, of course. <laughs> so uh, this is VS Code. The theme here is called GitHub Dark. It's super nice. 
And other than that, I of course use Vim mode and that counts for Xcode as well. But yeah, I mostly use uh, VS Code for web development. I don't think there's actually anything special to say for my, my setup here. It's very default VS Code. Also, I have VS Code pets, but honestly, I never do it. Let's kill the cat. Okay, and lastly, I want to quickly cover my NeoVim setup, which as of right now is totally broken. Oh shit. So, uh, yeah, my NeoVim setup has really fallen off uh, in the past <laughs> year or so, but hopefully I will get it up and running again sometime this year. So stay tuned for a video where I cover that. But the setup is functioning and uh, it's sort of nice, but... Uh, yeah, as of right now, I don't really use it much except for small uh, text changes. So yeah, that's that. And the last app for my development setup that I want to cover is the app called Yarn. So this is actually a really sick project that provides an interface for you to use LLMs directly with their respective API keys. So as of now, I'm using Claude Sonnet and I have to say, it's yeah working really great okay and <laughs> anyways uh using this costs a lot less than using something like a normal chat gpt plus subscription which i think is around 20 dollars a month or something and if we go ahead and check out my anthropic console you can see i've used this for approximately 10 days now pretty heavily some days i would say and it's only cost me 350 dollars so I expect this to be around $10 a month of fairly heavy usage. So yeah, shout out to Jan. It's open source. And actually I encountered a bug on it the other day and I just plopped in a description of the bug and some people came around really quick, found a workaround. And uh, yeah, I think it seems like a very nice project. It's free, of course. And yeah, you should check it out. Okay, so that covers the development setup of this video, I think at least. And now it's time to check out all of the other apps I have. So let's go down to the menu bar or dock or whatever. Check this out one by one. The first app I want to check out is called Reader, which is an RSS reader. So here I can subscribe to various feeds and get them directly into this super nice uh, application. Also, you can check out my website using an RSS reader. I post uh, bi-weekly stuff sometimes at least. And uh, yeah, you can check it out here. And um, yeah, I really like reader. I think it costs $5, but you have it for a lifetime. So I'm very happy with it. Now, I was using NetNewsWire before, which is an open source alternative, but there were some things I didn't like about it that I now don't remember what was. But Reader, I've been really happy with. And then let's cover the next app I haven't covered. Yeah, Obsidian. So this is a note-taking app that I'm sure most of you are very familiar with. So yeah, these are actually the notes for this video. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And uh, yeah, for those of you wondering, the theme I'm using is called Obsidian Grovebox, I think. And uh, also Vimold, of course. And other than that, I don't really think I have installed any plugins. Pretty nice, I like Obsidian. And uh, next up, we have the app called EA of Writer, which is a writing application. So if I am to write any longer texts, I use this. It's a markdown editor, I can write. And as you can see, it has this super sick typewriting effect when you write. And uh, the overall experience of using this is very good. So I also recommend EA Writer. Then we have Bandcamp. And what's kind of interesting about this is that this is not a Mac app, but actually just a normal iOS app. But with the app on Silicon chips, you can actually download a lot of iOS apps directly onto your Mac. So I really like how it actually functions in the end. The app is super functional and you can play music and uh, whatnot. So yeah, super sick with Bandcamp app on my Mac. And uh, next up, I also have Spotify. Don't have to go into detail about that. I think the next interesting thing is Authy, which is my two-factor authenticator, which is totally broken right now. And uh, yeah, this is because this was also just a phone app, but for some reason, 
they tell me to update it and I can't update it anymore, which sucks. So thumbs down for you, Othi, because I can't use your app anymore, but oh well. Also, my browser of choice, Firefox, the GOAT, of course. Uh, I just think it has the superior developer experience when uh, doing web development. Okay, and next up we have the VPN I'm using, which is iVPN, and this is super sick. I just noticed that their desktop client is actually open source, which is always nice. And uh, yeah, I've been very happy using this VPN for three years or so, so I'll recommend that. And lastly, cloud storage. I use something called Jota Cloud. It's a Norwegian company hosting all of my stuff in the Norwegian mountains. So that is also very great. And lastly, I want to cover what I use for my recording setup for videos like these. So excuse my messy uh, desktop. All I use is this app called Camera Window, which I use to spawn the camera window. And then I do a screen recording and boom, that's it. So I try to keep it simple. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about my Mac setup, please let me know in the comments. And other than that, I hope you have a great day onwards. Okay, later.